now recording. Cool. Okay, well, we're here today to talk about Microsoft. Uh, I thought that it would be good at the end of the year when we all have a lot to do to do it kind of in a lightning talk fashion. Um, as always, these are very informal um, in that feel free to ask questions. So the way I don't have like a timer or anything, but I don't plan on going into a whole lot of detail on each of these things. Um, but based on uh, the form that I sent out and talking to some people, um, I just thought we'd go over some quick kind of like tips and tricks of uh, Microsoft in terms of things that you maybe know about, but maybe aren't using um, or are using and, you know, et cetera. So I have a Go link, um, which I'll drop this in the chat in a little bit. Um, but, uh, and this will be available as a recording and the links to this stuff afterwards, because we have, you know, it's kind of sectioned up into what we'll present. And then, um, you know, there's a link to tutorials on each thing as well at the end. Okay, so this is what we're gonna cover today. Uh, Joshua Olson is gonna talk about list. Um, I'm gonna quickly cover these other things, copilot, to-dos, uh, I thought since, you know, we haven't really talked a lot since the migration, we could just quickly go over Teams files versus OneDrive, um, scheduling polls, Jenny's going to show that, and then um, creating a registration uh, link to media events, if that is something of interest. Okay, so to get started, I'm going to talk about to-dos. Um, so does anyone use uh, Outlook to-dos? Um, and let me pull the, you know, I have to do, I don't have dual screen. So let me pull the chat up on my phone. Uh, I can watch the chat for you, Sam. Uh, um, so far I'm seeing no, yes. So a mix yes. of responses. Yeah, so, okay. So one thing is that uh, to-dos is available in your um, email. So. Uh, to access them here, you're just going to click on this little My Day, uh, sorry, no, uh, here, the lightning bolt. Nope. Wow. You had it right. No, the calendar right. and then to do. To, yeah. <laughs> but then they also have their own landing page. Um, so I don't know, like always, I don't have things bookmarked, so... Uh, welcome to to do. It's to do.office.com, and then it should hook you to your Microsoft account um, automatically. So, the thing about Microsoft is things do change, like, you know, in terms of updates. Um, so, your flagged emails show up on your to do landing page. You can also get to it from your um, apps, you know, over here. It's this big check mark you can see show up in your um, Outlook email, um, the apps, et cetera. Um, but here you can create to-do list, right? It's pretty simple. Um, so you can do your day and add tasks and check them out throughout the day. And again, then when you're in your email um, outlook, it will show up there as well um, next to that calendar icon and then change it from calendar to to-do. Um, you can sort and group things, make suggestions. Um, so if I add a task here, You can then add it to your calendar, um, set a reminder, and then repeat it um, and keep adding to it throughout the day. You can also create lists. So um, here, and so once you have a list, you know, I was work, I was playing with this the other day, so I said World Day Project. You can add multiple tasks, etc., um, and then sort them, group them, and you can share them with a team. Um, so mm -hmm. if I click here, I can create an invitation link into um, a list. Um, so anyone within the organization, so I could um, create an invitation link where I could just invite via email, um, as well as manage access where I could limit it, stop sharing, et cetera, if I didn't want to do that. If you click on these little dots, you can also rename the list, change the theme, um, print the list if that's interesting to you. Um, so basically, it's just a way to create like a project management, I guess similar to Trello, but different. Um, this has changed. I mean, I think when I've looked at this in the past, I've thought Trello is more um, powerful. But again, I would keep checking on this because I think it gets kind of better um, and they change things. I will say <laughs> sometimes things get worse. Um, so I'm not guaranteeing. Um, 
you know, that it will, but, you know, so on and so on. So is anyone using this or has anything to add about this? The only thing I'll say is I think you can, and actually I, many of y'all know, I don't I don't do well with digital to-do lists. I do analog better. So I haven't used this a ton, but like, let me try one thing that I think you can do. I feel like, can you, can you make a to-do from an email? Yes. I, right? I think, think you can. Um, so notice here that um, as I add things in and I push, you know, I have to constantly click refresh. Um, when I go back to the to do's, um, it should be updated, you know, with my new to do's. Um, uh, maybe now, maybe you can't. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you can't. See, create so one. add an email. You, you, you can't. You can actually drag and drop emails into your to do. Look list. at that. Okay, Thanks, that's Brown. cool. Or the other way around, you can drag and drop emails into. To oh, do. so like, okay, so here's an email where I need to make an online student orientation. Yes. It even says action needed. That's so helpful. Wow, that is nice. Uh, you can also attach um, files. And if I click on here, if I click on a to do, um, you can add to your day. So add a due date, repeat, assign to, pick a category, as well as add a file. So if you had like documentation from OneDrive or um, on your file, you know, you could go to OneDrive through here, but you could also pull things from your desktop. I have to go to find OneDrive. Yeah, here it is. So I could go to OneDrive here, um, as well as pull things from my desktop. OK, anything else about to do's? OK, so let me go back to my next thing. Wait, question came up. Um, oh, yeah. I'm curious to know if there is a way to get to do's to show up on a calendar, kind of like Google to do's. Yeah. Um, so here, right. You can, um, add to my day as well as add a due date. And does it work on drag and drop from your calendar too, Brown? So when, when you do the drag and drop from your email to your to-do list, you can either add it as a to-do or an event. And if you add it as an event, it goes to your calendar. Okay. And and that's that's Here. kind of the uh, the the terminology that you'll see if you create something on your calendar and it's just for you, it's called an event. But the second you add somebody else to it, it's called a meeting. Um. So I'm saying that this is due today, right? Mm -hmm. And is it now on my calendar? So if I pick a date and time, will that work? Well, like, you know what I mean? Is it now on my calendar? No, it's just going to remind me. Oh. Okay. I don't feel like I showed it. <laughs> Do you want to show it, Brown? I guess what I was what I was saying is when you drag and drop an email to your to do list, there's two little uh -huh. sections that show up and one should one is a to do and one is an event. Uh huh. Um, and so let me see if I can get to it here. Um, let's see if I can show it. Um, if you add it as an event. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to you know, I'll show here. So this this is my uh, this is my email, and so back to this. Here's the to do list. If I drag and drop this as a task or an event, as the task will show up as to dos. If I add it as an event, it gives me the event thing. So it's called an event up here, and if I add, um, so if I added somebody to this. Um, I think it'll start treating it as a meeting, and here's where you can set the time of it. 
as far as getting a specific um, uh, leave, as far as getting a specific to do to show up in a in your calendar, I don't know that I've ever done that before. If I set a reminder tomorrow, Wednesday, eight a.m., then in my calendar, I don't, I don't see it here, and I don't see anything about adding it to the days let me let me look into that and see if i can figure out how to add these things to it because i know but, one of the things i do is i add things to my to-do list with an action but i don't know how to go the other way so well and i mean to me i find it helpful that you can have it open like next to your calendar even if it doesn't um do that function which again like like Andrea said, we've all gotten a little spoiled from the from the experiences we've had over the years. Um, and that's kind of a bummer. But I I do like that you can like have your calendar up and then have the to do list over in the right side. Um, by the kind of same way that Sam did it by clicking on that little icon. Yeah, that's how I usually use it is like just looking at it through the browser Outlook version on the right. But yeah. Um, yeah, and I like Google has ruined us all. Or I don't know. It ruined, it, I agree, Andrea, it ruined me. Um, and Steve points out that it's in the app version as well. It's an icon in the upper right. I just looked at mine and I couldn't see it, but you can add apps to your teams. And like, I think one of the things about Microsoft is that there's, different versions like you know like I just switched to new teams so I'm still like figuring stuff out um so keep that in mind okay so the next thing I was going to talk about is um co-pilot someone in the forum um asked for me to talk about this uh so I'm going to so co-pilot is the uh AI you know Microsoft's AI tool so think like chat GPT right um, so to get started, you go to copilot.microsoft.com and you're going to um, sign in with your UNCG account. But I did want to show you all this before I sign in in that there are terms and privacy involved uh, with Microsoft Copilot and that um, I believe from what I understand that uh, UNCG owns this data, right? So if you, uh, for example, are, <laughs> I don't know, I would be sure to tell students this, right? Like in that if they were maybe doing it in some way that they maybe didn't mean to be uh, bad, but it was, UNCG is, I would assume, monitoring this. Um, so take that as you will. There's links here to terms and privacy. And if you Google like Microsoft Copilot data retention, there's a lot of stuff in there about, it just depends on the university. Um, and again, I'm just gonna, I always assume that UNCG is taking my stuff. So just FYI. Um, so of course y'all are gonna have to go through this journey with me because I wanted to talk about that first. Okay, so here's Copilot, right? Again, if anyone has used, um, and then again, notice it here says protected. Um, I think what they mean here is it's protected against outside of UNCG. Um, so that can be nice if you don't want to use ChatGPT, if you're using ChatGPT to like make email templates and things like this, um, UNCG will be the only people to see this um, aspect. Um, there are features where you can um, analyze, uh, make templates, right? Uh, you, they give you these prompts as an example. So um, But that's going to be the prompt. Um, I just pushed it in um, and then they're looking. And then they create a subject line for me. The agenda. So on and so on. So I don't know how many of y'all have used chat GPT. Um, this is pretty to me similar um, of that. Uh, they send you out some links if you're interested in learning more about these things. 
you can say if you like it or don't like it. And I'm assuming they'll keep that data to know kind of what you might be liking or looking for. Um, I don't know what this note, oh, the note pilot um, is uh, creating the content on the right and um, collaborating that way. So you could have a kind of record of what you're doing, looks like. I feel like that wasn't there when I looked at it the other day again. Um, and then again, they're constantly telling you about the FAQs, terms, and pi privacy over on the right. Um, and then here's what I did today. So any questions, comments? Yeah, seems like kind of a cool tool to create stuff like templates, maybe a lesson plan. Um, again, maybe it will help me come up with jokes to start my library sessions. I didn't even think about that. I would love for you to to see if they can give you a good joke to start the sixth grade math class. Because like that's probably the level of math that I'm on on. Let's see what Copilot says. Is that why was six afraid of seven? Because seven, eight, nine. <laughs> I want to tell that to my uh nine-year-old today like because she that likes then. math. Uh maybe that I feel like that might be better for elementary school, but I don't know. Maybe sixth graders would be into it. Who can say? I don't have a sixth grader. But yeah. Any questions about Copilot? Feel free to unmute. Okay. Well, that was Copilot. So um, this is just more of a check-in and then I can go to my OneDrive if you want. Uh, but uh, we haven't really had a ULVLC session since uh, Google and Box moved over to OneDrive. Um, so I just want to check in and see if everyone's cool with that, if anyone has any questions, since we're all in a room together. Um, if I don't have the answers, I'm happy to look into it. Um, there's a link here also on like tips for organizing your OneDrive folder, um, you know, like in terms of how they work, in terms of creating folders, moving documents, uh, recycling bin, et cetera. So, I mean, it's pretty basic, but again, if you're like in the mode of organizing, if you're still figuring things out, this could help, could not. Anything anyone wants to say about that? I, I've got a couple of things that I've, we've run into supporting mm -hmm. folks with uh, yes. OneDrive that I was going to show, show you all. For sure. Um, there's a OneDrive app, and it is probably installed on your machine. And by default, it's going to try and make it so that your OneDrive is on your machine locally. And what we're finding is that it takes up a lot of space. So if you go down to the corner over in your taskbar, there should be a little blue cloud icon. And if you right click on that, you get to OneDrive and you can go to your settings. I'm gonna share my screen here. And you'll see the OneDrive settings that look like this. And you'll see how much your storage you're using and things like that. Um, what you should do is check sync and backup, advanced settings, and then scroll down here to files on demand. The reason why is if you have files on demand turned on, what it will do is if there is a file that you are not using on your local machine, it'll push it to the cloud so it's not stored locally. And so if you have a folder that, um, let's see, if you have a folder in your OneDrive and you'll see these little clouds here, that means that these files exist on the cloud, but not necessarily locally. And you can toggle whether or not a machine uh, folder is local by right clicking on something and always keep on this device or free up space. If you free up space, it will take this file. And see how there's, you saw the little spinny arrows thing, pushed it to the cloud. And so this file is not really on my machine right now. I can open it 
And when I open it, I can preview it, provided I'm connected to the internet somehow. If I decide that this file is important enough for me that it's on my machine always, and this is probably important for folks to use laptops, you can right click and always keep on this device. And when you do, you'll get those little arrows and now you'll have a little green check on it, which means if you lose network connectivity, this file will always be on your machine. Um, as we start doing more with SharePoint and shared files with folks about OneDrive, we've seen a problem where like, for example, you know, one person will be uploading a lot of video or something like that to the SharePoint and others will have that folder linked in their OneDrive and it'll immediately start copying all of that stuff down. So check your uh, OneDrive settings. You can free up disk space here. Um, and what this will do is anything that is not set to always keep on device will be pushed to the cloud and you'll need a network connection to interact with it. So I, it's one of those things to be, a, uh, be aware of about when things are available, when on a line, online and uh, uh, when things are uh, always available on this device. So you can see that down in the bottom of the little window. Great, thank you. Um, I was using the OneDrive desktop integration and I was like encountering a lot of issues. Um, so I turned it off. <laughs> is is that bad? Brown? I mean, I have like, I save things in OneDrive that I need to and that I need to collaborate on. And, you know, it's like backup, you know, like storage, like cloud storage. But then again, I turned off the desktop integration. So it's just not happening automatically. Yeah, I so when when it first got pushed to us, I tried some things that um, to see how it would work. And one of the things that happened to me, and I'm still kind of paying for this, is I told it I wanted to sync important folders. So let me share again. Um, this sync and backup manage backup here. It will say backup folders on this PC. And when you do this, it'll try and back up your documents, pictures, desktop, potentially others. The problem is when you do that, you end up with a OneDrive desktop and a desktop. And so like this desktop folder here is different from my desktop folder here. And some programs, if you went to save to desktop, it would put it here and some, some would put it here. Like similarly with documents, this documents folder here and this OneDrive UNCG documents folder here. So the things, some things would treat the folders as the same and some would treat the folders as different. And there was no real rhyme of reason as to why one would be one way or the other. So I turned it off. So I do not recommend the, um, the uh, what was it? The manage backup important folder, PC folders to OneDrive. I, I do not recommend this. It doesn't work 100%. And because it doesn't work 100%, it doesn't work at all. Hey, Brown, it's Ann Simons. Um, you may have already said, but when you, um, when you do the thing where you're always saving it to your PC, to your device, does it still keep it on the cloud as well? Yeah, so when you when you keep a file locally and you edit it, it's going to try and sync the changes wherever it is. So if you have a file locally, let's say you have an Excel file and you save it locally and you make some changes to it after a period of time and hopefully a very short period of time. But we're seeing with Microsoft, it takes time for it to catch up. Um, it will sync those changes to what you have in OneDrive. And then if you were to go edit it in the web or on another machine in OneDrive, it should sync those changes back to your machine. Um, I would not recommend having multiple machines try and do the um, back. I especially don't recommend doing the backup important PC folders to OneDrive on multiple machines. If you can get the backup important PC folders to work for yourself, great. I would not recommend doing that. Multiple, multiple machines with the same account. 
in theory, what should happen is when you edit a file and it is um, targeted such that it will be synced to OneDrive and to a desktop somewhere, that file should get the changes wherever they're made pushed to the other location. Should. So your mileage may vary. <laughs> Thank you. There's a hand up from Terry. Hey, I just had a question. Um, I'm finding a difficulty in one little aspect. Um, any folder I have in OneDrive, I can't seem to rename or change the folder name. Um, and I don't know if there's a mechanism. It always seems whenever I try to do it, it says the folder is in use. You can't change that name. So I don't know if it's trying to sync it. Uh, it's currently a folder that has a blue cloud um, instead of like a check mark. So it's up in the cloud and it just won't let me change the, the name. I don't know if anybody else has experienced that or not for a workaround. I haven't done had that, but that is super annoying. Because <laughs> I like to rename my folders. Brown, you're muted. Yeah, Brown, are you talking? I'm sorry about that. Um, it's probably best to be default muted. Um, so I have this folder here. Um, this is my OneDrive, and I know I can rename it here. Um, but that's in that's in your SharePoint. I'm talking about looking at it as a directory structure um, on your computer. The one pre the view previous to this, that right there. Yeah, and so this um, it should catch up. It is not. Um, it does not look like it is caught up yet. And if I try and rename it here, you're saying that. If I try to rename it in this view, it will not let me rename. A folder that is up in the cloud. OK, so. So this is sinking here well for you it did it well it's doing it i don't know if it did it <laughs> well i get an immediate error that says this folder um, is in use yeah you can't do that so it changed the name here but i'm still not seeing the one that i renamed to your vlc test about a minute ago um nope now it's now it's changed yells vlc test it took it a second to catch up so it's not instantaneous. Um, as far as what's connected and what's not, I would check and see if maybe your syncing may be paused, or um, which you can see um, here, uh, like uh, check and see if any of these things are set for paused or any of your settings are changed for um, Yeah, it should notify me when syncing is paused because for some reason you're trying to make a change to something that isn't connected or syncing is paused. Um, it may give you an error. I don't know why it would give you an error that says that something's in use. Well, it says. It can't be completed because the folder or file is open in another program. And then I see now it says availability status sync pending, so there must be a pending sync on it. OK. So. OK, I'll try to figure that out. Thanks. OK. That just uh, one thing I'll say, I don't want to be too negative here today, but I don't find the um, error messages from Microsoft particularly useful most of the time. Um, and I'm usually like, OK, but I still don't understand like why it isn't. I'm like, you know, I'm the English librarian. I'm pretty good at understanding words, um, but sometimes I'm in there and I'm like, what does that mean? Um, so that sounds like another one that is really not super helpful. And you had to kind of look specifically to see that it said something about syncing. It didn't say like, hey, there's a syncing error here, which is how you would have known to like go look in a different place. So that's annoying. 
And it doesn't show the little circular arrows to say that it is sinking. It looks yeah. like it's just there. So I don't understand why I, I can't rename a folder that I want to rename. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying not to come at this training or anything with Microsoft as much as I have been with a deficit mindset. Like, I'm trying to be like, you know, like, okay, well, there's good things. But <laughs> um, I think that, like, it worked. The applications to me, like, work so much better on the desktop than the cloud, right? But then, like, um, the... You know, but like I'm so used to working on the cloud. You know what I mean? Like Google conditioned me to work on my browser. You know, so anyway, like that, like even making this PowerPoint for today, I did it all on um, line because I was like, oh, I want to share this with people who want to like add into it. You know, so I want to work on it on my browser. But like the formatting was wild. Um, so anyway, um, all right, this cartoon, I'm laughing at this now. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm reading it. Um, okay, sorry. Great. Yeah, my, my search regularly Great. doesn't work. Um, and it's not like, um, I, it, I can't, uh, it doesn't seem to happen in like consistent circumstances, again, that I could understand like, oh, it doesn't work when I have an email open or something, you know, it's just one of, it's very, very odd. Um, the same thing happens in both my email and my OneDrive with the searching. It just sometimes it'll just be like, can't find it. Well, I um, am happy that I now can keep this chat and I'm going to um, be taking this uh, SpongeBob meme from Andrea and using it in all my training from now on. Um, okay, so Jenny, do you want to share scheduling poll or... I'd be you delighted. Okay. I'd, I think no, uh, we'll share I, the I'd love, love of sharing things. Um, um, okay. Session. Hold on. Let me get it pulled up. I want to make sure I don't have any, like, you know, I'm a manager. Let me make sure I don't have any personal. Yeah. As pers Jenny's personal, pulling that up, I will stuff. say I was originally going to talk about Microsoft bookings. Um, and then I played around in bookings and I didn't like it. And that is a me opinion, not an everyone opinion. There are people using bookings successfully um, in the library. So bookings allows you to schedule like, you know, you could do like office hours, kind of similar to how we do our scheduling links and things like that. Um, but I decided that for the sake of lightning talks and the fact that I could not get bookings to work exactly the way I wanted, and it was taking me too long in terms of this training, that we would just do scheduling poll, which is what Jenny's going to show. So saying that, if you're interested in bookings, uh, Microsoft has guides that I found unhelpful, but there are people in the library who are using bookings successfully. So I, again, I just don't like, don't want to, um, turn anyone off of it because of my ineptitude, <laughs> like, you know, not being able to get it to work. Uh, so definitely check it out. Um, one thing, if you do check it out and start playing around with it, it will now show up in your signature um, automatically. That was happening to me this morning. And I was like, why is this book? You know, so I had to go yeah, to my signature. Check on that. Yeah, go check on that, Jenny, and uh, turn it off because I hadn't like, you know, I didn't want people to book through that since I hadn't, you know, incorporated it yeah. successfully. So you have to go into your signature oh, yeah. and turn that off if you okay. uh, are playing so with it. Good tip, because I was playing with it when you and I were trying to figure it yeah. out on Friday. Yeah. So I have not checked. Okay. Yeah. Um, all so, right. Well, FYI. I've got this. I will share my screen. There are, uh, I know a lot of faculty members who do use bookings, a lot of in course instructors. So I know there are people using it successfully um, in the libraries, like, we have LibCal, which we use mostly for consultations with students, faculty, community members, staff, whoever needs to book one. And so I haven't felt a particular need to get into bookings. Um, when I see other people's bookings, it, it looks really nice. It looks easy to use, but, um, you know, I can't, like you said, I don't, I can't, I can't corroborate that um, from my own experience. Okay. So, um, I, let's say that I want to schedule an appointment with a bunch of people and they don't all use, um, Outlook, which is the case for people all over our campus, um, and beyond. Um, we're great at it in the library, but not everybody is. So let's say I want to do a quick meeting. 
Um, I'm going to call it quick meeting. Can y'all see? I should have asked that. You can see. Okay. So I'm going to bump this up. So once I go to more, which I'm sure many of you have figured this out, but if you use that diagonal double-sided arrow to expand a calendar invite, you get a whole lot more options. Um, it took me a concerningly long time to figure that out, actually, um, and I was just so frustrated again. But here I have lots and lots of stuff and I can um, go ahead and invite people. So let's say I want this to be with Sam and Brown. Um, and that's cool because I can see that they're on there. Um, uh, and let's see who's someone. I don't. OK, so let's. Oh, I'm just going to I better warn them. Here are a couple of folks I work with from other institutions that I, you know, I don't know. They don't use Outlook or what have you. So let me add Jillian and then Allison. A.R. Armstrong. No, nope, that's not it. Uh, I don't remember. OK, so let me add Kelly Adams. So these are folks I work with who are not at UNCG and at their institutions don't use. Microsoft, lucky. Um, what I would do here if I was like, well, I need to see this. Um, I need to see who's available because I really need to meet with Sam Brown, Jillian, and Kelly for an urgent meeting on in a month. Um, so I'm going to click the scheduling poll option here. Um, and, and <laughs> okay, there it is. Um, it shows up on the side um, and it, it kind of, it, it kind of works like a doodle poll if you've used doodle polls before. Um, so you can um, select times that you're free uh, and then send it to other people. Um, I haven't. I'm going to I haven't actually done this. I've only played with this. Um, I actually I should have asked. I should have asked Matt if I could demonstrate this um, using his non, he's not at UNCG, but, um, oh, Andrea used it and it worked really well. It's, it seems self-explanatory-ish, um, which is to say, okay, well, I want to do it this time, but like I could also squeeze it in at these other times. And then if I go next, it tells me these are the times to select. I can enter a location if I need to, and here's where I can manage settings. Um, and I like to, um, I would want to be able to do this, hold selected times on my calendar, which is so nice because Doodle doesn't do that. Even if I um, hook up with Google, like hook up Google and Doodle, Outlook and Doodle, whatever, um, it doesn't hold the times. Oh, yes, Andrea has has offered to share her screen. That would be great because she's actually done it. Um, and I will stop sharing. But there are things I like about it like that. And then also that it can schedule uh, when if it's like, OK, look, everybody can do 1 p.m. Um, it'll schedule it at that point, which Doodle will tell you like, hey, there's a consensus. But. All right. Um, can everybody see my screen? Yes. Yes. Cool. So <clears throat> I recently did this to try to figure out if we could do a little graduation celebration dinner with our student workers. Um, so um, I basically just created this and then shared it with them in an email. I got an email notification whenever somebody filled out the poll, which was really nice. And then if I come here to click on view poll, it'll pull it up in a new window and I can see um, what everybody said yes and no to. You can even say if you prefer something, which I think is a nice option. Um, and then there are a couple of other features that I'm not using, but you could turn them on if you want. For example, you can have it um, reserve this time in your calendar while you're waiting for the results. And then if you want, it'll automatically create an event once everybody agrees on the same time. Um, which could be cool. I haven't done that because I do like to do one final like check in with everybody before making an event, but it, it can um, probably save you some steps if you want. Um, and you can do other things like you can add another time if you want or, you know, send reminders, things like that. You can add more people to it. Um, I set the managers optional attendees so we didn't have to reply to the poll and then the students were required. So, yeah. I like it so far. 
That's yeah, awesome. I like have gotten really frustrated with Doodle. Like there are just so many ads and like then and now they like, limit the not, number of options yeah, you can choose. And it's not and... very intuitive, like in terms of um how you like I know you can drag and drop, but I feel like there's always like a delay and then you gotta go to your back and forth. Your so anyway, I think this is better personally. Um so thank you, Jenny and Andrea. Mostly thank you, Andrea. You show what it really looks like. I mean, that was like nice to have the final product. This is, you know, it is going better than I could have even dreamed. That is like Teamwork. really though, that is a lot as someone who schedules a lot of things using Doodle, which like like Leah said, like an alternative to Doodle is like an amazing thing. And that it it looks much cleaner and clearer on the scheduler side. Um like you can really easily be like okay this works for everyone let's do it um but just that having it hold your calendar is like beautiful chef's kiss okay so the next thing i'm going to talk about um before joshua talks about list is um making a registration link to a uh team's meeting uh so here we go so uh, I do this, and I think you're supposed to do this, through your Teams app. So here is my Teams app, and here is the calendar portion of it. So let's say I want to make an event at 1 o'clock today where I wanted it to be registration. Uh, so I just click on it on the calendar, and this creates the event. Um, and then notice at the top, you have um, require registration none. But here I can say either for people in my org or for everyone. You can still invite in your hosts and stuff without registration, uh, but that's it. So if you wanted to create a webinar, details, attendee registration and communication in one place, you can make it a webinar. Um, you can also just keep it a meeting and then view the registration form. So here's the registration form where you can upload an image, um, add title, um, You can set a max. Um, events allow for up to, can you go higher? I think max is a thousand. Um, but if you needed, if you wanted to say less, like if you only wanted like 100 people or 50 people, you can make it lower. Um, and then here's the form uh, defaults for first name, last name, email, but you can add fields um, here, right? As well as a custom question. So if I wanted to say input or choice, you can say, um, what UNCG department are you with? They can add that and you can make it required or not. Um, so that's cool. Uh, you can add speakers. So, um, with bios, this is just like adding it in with the bio. It doesn't connect to UNCG. You know what I mean? Like Jenny's not going to get an invite. It's just going to say, um, Jenny Dale and then a bio. Uh, you can also add a description here, um, so on and so on. So I'm gonna save. Uh, also, this is where you get the copy registration link. So if I wanted to email people, right, the registration link to sign up, that's where I would do that. And here's what it looks like. You can also view it in your browser. Um, and then um, this, you could add a, you know, this defaults to being in Teams. <laughs> uh, so I have not played around with it where if you didn't want it to be in Teams, but usually creating these things within the Teams app uh, is making an assumption that you want um, Teams uh, in here as well. Um, so um, you can change this who can bypass lobby, right? If you did, if you wanted it to be like a public event outside of UNCG, um, or if you wanted to keep the lobby, this means that people would be in the lobby, kind of similar to how Zoom was, right? Uh, you can record and transcribe automatically. This is just all the options you always get with this, um, you know, but similar to scheduling polls, it does give you this kind of scheduling assistant where you can add required presenters and see their calendar availability um, on here as well. Again, like Jenny said, if they're using their calendar, which again, I've been kind of shocked in the last couple of weeks how many um, people have told me they're not using their calendar. <laughs> but like, how do you? How, how do you want? Um, so on and so on. So if I wanted Jenny to be a required presenter on here, right? Uh, this is where I'd add her there. 
Any questions? Concerns? Anyone use this? I used I think, it for webinars worth watching. Uh, I think Rachel, Rachel used must it. have used it for Rachel yeah, must used it for the invitation, and I hadn't seen it um, until um, y'all used it. And I, I do think that's cool that you can have that, and so it gives you a sense of like who's going to be like how many people are going to show up. Yeah, and then it does send the like. Um, you know, it sends communication out, like it does integrate with your Outlook in that way. Um, I thought it worked fine for webinars worth watching, and we had people come in from the public. I mean, we had some technical issues on that day, but it wasn't to do with the registration. Um, it was to do with just Teams and life stuff. Um, so yeah. Uh, so Amy's, how do people who don't use their calendars ever show up? For, I don't, I don't know what other people are doing. This was an example. I'm um, the co-chair for a search committee with uh, someone uh, with a faculty member who will remain nameless. <laughs> but um, he told me the other day, like he was like, oh, I don't use my calendar, you know, because I was like, oh, well, I'll just use scheduling poll and schedule. And he was like, well, I don't use my calendar. So that would be, you know, so I was like, okay, you do you and tell me. <laughs> you want me to show up to this event. So yeah, it's a thing. Okay, well, I want to give uh, Joshua his uh, time to go over list. So uh, Joshua, you can share your screen and show us list um, Thank from you. your end. Yeah. Let's... Trying to share entire screen. Okay, you should be seeing the Brady Bunch screen. It's good. All right. <laughs> uh, so when when Sam first asked me about um, or asked all of us about like these uh, tips and tricks and and talking about it really quickly, I <clears throat> I thought about lists because it's recently come on my radar and I feel like I overlooked it uh, because of the name. Um, and I thought, okay, yeah, lists, I understand what a list is, right, and move on. Um, but I started playing around with it some, and and I'm seeing some use cases for it. So um, basically in the slides, I've added uh, a link to Microsoft uh, support page where they talk about what a list is in Microsoft. And kind of like SharePoint, it it's many things. Um, so a list can be, um, an app in Microsoft 365 online. It can be a SharePoint list, which I think is how it started. And you may have also seen or tried to use lists in Microsoft Teams. It is available as, as a Teams app. And so this link will kind of give you a good springboard to go into getting started with lists um, in those different uh, platforms and areas. Um, I'm focusing on Microsoft 365 though. So, um, if you're in a Microsoft Office app or go to office.com, then you can use this waffle menu in the upper left and uh, lists, you can see it right here on my screen. It may not show up on here since you haven't used it. So you would go to more apps, which is what Jenny keeps her homepage on there. Um, but if it is showing up, it will be uh, under this menu. So I'm gonna click on it. And you can see that there is a desktop app. So there, there's a desktop online version. I haven't installed or used the desktop app. So this is completely just uh, the online version. Um, but up here at the top, you've got a new list. And you can see here, you could start out with a blank list. Uh, you've also got uh, an existing list. So you can just duplicate or copy a list you've already made. Uh, as a starting point, and you can also bring in Excel and CSV, which is apparently something that Excel can't even do online. Um, and the thing that really caught my attention were these templates showing things that you could do. So asset management, I, I was thinking of the lending cover in relation to that, and I'm exploring uh, that as an option. Um, you also have issue trackers, event itinerary, which you could connect with uh, the event registration uh, that we were just talking about. 
as well as tracking work progress um, and fun things like gift ideas and recipe tracking. Um, <clears throat> so I've already made a list here and I'm not gonna go into lending cover because that's got some information that is private. Um, so I'm getting this pop up and I keep uh, saying do this later because I wanted everyone to see this. Uh, it will prompt you to do a lot of really neat things like uh, integrate with Power Automate and stuff like that. Um, so I'm going to say do this later and I can come up the finish setup here in the upper right to, to finish that later on. So <clears throat> basically, this is a list. Um, I'm making it a, a work process uh, progress tracker. And if you're familiar with spreadsheets, you're basically familiar with Microsoft List. This is a fancy looking spreadsheet, which is part of what makes it so powerful. Um, you can edit in grid view and you can actually see the cells lighting up there. Um, but you get a lot of control over these categories. You can make these little colored uh, peels uh, to really quickly communicate information. Um, and you can see from the columns that you have a lot of different types of data types that you can uh, that you can use in the columns. And for me, the person one is especially intriguing because um, you can start typing someone's name uh, the same way you would add them to an event and you can actually assign them or add them to things like work tasks, right? So um, that's really neat to be able to associate that and not just have someone's name um, because I can hover over Jenny Dell here and I can see phone, I can, you know, go to her content that we've looked at together recently. Um, and another part to the list that that's going to be different from uh, spreadsheets are you can set up different views. So up here in the upper right, I've got filter, um, but I've got these other uh, views that I can select and I've made a progress board. So this kind of um, gives you this uh, barrel look with cards and it kind of helps you visualize, okay, these are tasks. They're in different buckets um, and we can quickly see what's not started. Actually, this is started because this is our lightning talk. So I'm going to drag it over to in progress and you see it automatically updated the pill to the right color. Um, <clears throat> and I can just scan this and say, oh, Jenny's behind on something. So maybe I should ask her about this, uh, these time reports that are non-existent. Um, but yeah, you can you can drag and drop based on these different uh, barrels and you can actually share this as a, um, I'm trying to remember where that is now, share, there's an option to share this particular view so that if you wanted someone to see one way of looking at your list, uh, it would be there's their share, um, which looks pretty familiar uh, to the other Microsoft's share options. Um, but I'm going to go back to all items. Um, <clears throat> where this could become really powerful is under automate and integrate. So you can set up rules kind of like email rules. You can set up reminders um, and, and this is going to be smart to the type of list that you're that you're creating. And then you've got integrate. So you can integrate with Power Automate, meaning if I switch something to blocked, in this case, what could happen is an email gets sent to a supervisor that says, oh, this task has been blocked. And that would happen automatically without anyone having to actually send that email. Um, and then you've also got Power B, which just gives you more ways to um, visualize and report on the information that, that's going to be in your list. So I'm still exploring this. Other people may have um, more experience with it um, or could could uh, talk to some of those features a little bit better. But uh, I feel like it was something I was overlooking. And now I'm definitely uh, trying to 
to find uses for it. Um, if anything, it just gives you a different view of a spreadsheet and you might have gotten uh, spreadsheet fatigue, right? Got tired of looking at the, the standard old spreadsheet and so now you can see a pretty list instead. But if anyone has any questions about it, I, I can uh, try to answer. Yeah, thank you. Um, I just put a link in there for there's a uh, workshop coming up on Power Automate, and I just reminded people there's a working group on campus on Power Automate that I think um, a couple people in here are on. Um, so uh, if you have any questions about Power Automate, we do have that that app and that feature, um, and it looks like it integrates pretty well with lists. So that's cool. I mean, I think there are some cool integrations with Microsoft to kind of uh, say that on a on a on a positive note as we're heading towards 12 o'clock. So does anyone have any questions, comments? Um, I don't know if we have time for a lot of demos in the next three minutes, but something that wasn't shown off that I could throw a link in the chat to. Um, anything at all about Microsoft? So I end on a positive note if people wanna wanna rant again, it's fine. I don't, I've got, I don't know I've got Microsoft. One. I've got yeah, one right. thing that I do want to share. Um, so Microsoft changes their stuff all of the time. We've seen it. We'll get used to using something and then it'll go away. Uh, what I would recommend is occasionally checking the Microsoft 365 roadmap, which is here. And the reason why is they're always listing things that they are doing and what is coming and what might be available soon. Um, you can look at um, specific products like Outlook and stuff like that. So I would pay attention to this. If there's something that's particularly bothering you about, you know, I really want to be able to do this, um, check and see if they're working on it. Um, one of the things that I really want to be able to do is look at shared inboxes in my favorites list in the Outlook web browser. And apparently that is something that's coming and maybe as early as next month. So. I would I would occasionally check that and see if something is changing soon. Yeah, I think um, also I want to note that Terry pointed out um, that he could show Power Automate to email the results. So I think what I'm going to do because we have a minute left and I don't want to keep people past twelve uh, too long at least is um, I'm going to email some people that are using Power Automate um, and if you know people who are using Power Automate. Um, email me and I think we should do a ULVLC session on Power Automate and um, with a group of us um, who are playing around with it and uh, we'll do that because uh, that's cool. Okay, anything else in the last minute? I get really hungry at 12, so <laughs> I don't want to stay too long past it. That's just, just me. Um, Okay, well, happy Tuesday, everyone. And I hope everyone has a great rest of your week, day. Uh, this recording will be available. There was nothing really private shared in here. Um, and um, I, so I will post it on YouTube and put it on the LibGuide as well as be on the channel. Um, let me know anyone if you feel like there was stuff that flashed on the recording uh, that you don't want it to be. On YouTube, I, I I tried to pay attention. It looked looked okay to me. Um, but yeah, okay. Thanks, everyone. Bye.